previously on 58 Keys. The other week, I was working away from home, and, and I just wanted your company, really, in my hotel r room. That, that sounds wrong. We talked. We talked about what was on my iPad, on, on the, the iPad Pro that I'd brought with me to write on while I was away and also to present from uh, the next day when I was going into school as a visiting author. Actually, you were going to tell me what was on your iPad. Yeah, yeah. Comments. Um, today, well, I'm, I'm in my own office, but even with that same iPad over there, even with a Mac on my desk behind me, I realised that actually I am pretty much life support dependent on my iPhone. I'd like to show you what it is that I use it for so much. So let's make this a fast run through a dozen or more best iPhone apps for writers, both actually for our writing and also from the business of writing. I'd love to actually show it, hold up the phone and show you, uh, but you know, so I use it all the time while well, I'm filming with it at the moment. Life support dependent on this iPhone 13 Pro. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because, you know, you know we have so much to talk about and, and okay, actually today I have so much I want to show you. Oh, actually, hang on, let me go over there so we can put that there. That is the front screen of my iPhone. I use every single thing on that, every, but possibly to excess, really. Uh, but then, actually, let's not detail them all. You already recognize a whole bunch of them. You've got them on your iPhone. Um, so, okay, as, imp as important as they are to me in my writing, let's, uh, let's get rid of the phone, for example. Bye. Uh, mail as well. Safari music, although actually it is on the iPhone that I use Apple Music the most. I don't know why that would be, but it is. Uh, similarly, okay, all our iPhones, we've all got uh, messages, haven't we? And photos, camera, clock, uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 oh, the settings. Let's get rid of sweatings. S sweatings? Settings. Uh, oh, no, wait, actually, sorry, maps as well. I actually like Apple Maps, but let's take that out. And that leaves us with, is that 18? Let me lose Apple News, because, uh, I mean, it's good for research. It's also, it's good just for reading, really. And also, it's fun when you read your own writing on there. That's quite, I quite like that bit. Uh, but uh, that's gone, and that one just above it, uh, YT Studio. That's a YouTube uh, app that helps me make this 58 curious, so we can skip that one. Come. Um, Slack there. Slack is a messaging service that I, I use a lot, but I use it with exactly one writing client. I mean, I use it a great deal with them, but... I would like to get this down to 10 or so apps for us to talk through, so 15, is that 15? Okay, oh, Duolingo, uh, you know this one, it's for learning languages, and as it happens today, I am on day 890 for learning French. Oui, mais, sans débarrasser. I hope that was right. Um, I wish, I wish there were a Duolingo, Duolingo option for sign language, you know, that'd be so good. Really like that. Um, Wikipanion. Well, it's just Wikipedia, isn't it? It's an app for reading Wikipedia on your phone. You don't need it. But just as actually as when I'm on the iPad, I, I prefer reading Wikipedia through that app because it's uh, it's better format. It's more clearly formatted. It's easier to read. And also it's pretty good actually at keeping track of those rabbit holes, of which rabbit hole you've just gone down for it. So I like it for that, but still, no. Um, I'll actually, I'll tell you what, I'll put a link to Wikipedia and actually all of these third-party apps, the, the non-Apple apps, the non-the things you've already got on your iPhone, I'll put a link to all of them in the description. Um, so if I do that, then tell you what, where to? That's for getting me to a place and City Mapper is for getting me around that place. So let's just shred those two as well. Shed, shred, uh, to get us down to 11. Okay, okay, actually, let's do 11 because one of those 11 apps is not an app at all. Open logs, which I also have on my iPad. There are open logs there in the bottom corner, bottom left corner of my iPhone. Um, very heavily used on the iPhone and the iPad. That's the one that's not an app. It's a shortcut. If I tap on that, I get this. It's a list of, of, of spreadsheets that I use in my writing business and my writing work. It's not all of them that I use, and it only happens, actually, that they're all spreadsheets. There's no reason that some of them can't be notes or other documents. Actually, actually, yeah, that's a thought. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to add some notes in there when we're done. 
cheers. These are just things that I happen to use quite a lot in my business and actually I think I really use them a lot because they're right there. I, I don't have to go find them. So have the thought, open them up, tap, gone, done. I, and I don't really want to go into any of these to show you what's in there, especially not my Apple Fitness Plus success rate. But um, to what instead, more usefully, let me show you this in shortcuts, in the shortcuts app on the iPhone. Let me show you how this is done. So first, you open up shortcuts, you start a new one, you get shortcuts to ask, what does somebody want from a list? And then you have a you know, series of commands, really saying, open this or that spreadsheet or note or document, whatever it is, depending on what was picked from the list. Doddle. Uh, but also, actually, uh, a doddle that's done with. Now, so let's, let's wipe off open logs as well, get through these. And uh, next one, password. Can't take you in there either, because it has all my passwords. And all my passwords and my credit cards and my clothing sizes. Plus, uh, actually, it has passwords and account details from some of my writing clients. So, deeply handy. Can't show you, but yeah, actually, I wonder how much handier it's going to be for how much longer. Safari, especially on the Mac, it's becoming a much more powerful password handler. We'll see what happens with one password, but I do love it at the moment. Uh, to get rid of that, and otherwise, let's go from the top, uh, except that I want to circle around the most used one. Uh, Fantastical up there. That's a calendar app that I mentioned before. I've actually done an entire 58 keys uh, on it and on its companion contacts app, Card Up, which again, I'll, I'll link to. In short, it's a calendar, yeah, but it's also the very smartest I know at letting you type in things like lunch with Rachel two weeks from Tuesday at Costa, and it knows what that date is, and it offers you all the nearest Costa coffee houses and then if you want it will then also keep an eye on traffic conditions so that it can alert you when you actually need to get out the door and go. Uh, I also actually I very much like now how it integrates with Zoom. Um, if you have a paid account on Fantastical and on Zoom then you create a new event in Fantastical and tick a box in there to say that it is a Zoom meeting and Fantastical will go off and get the Zoom meeting link generate the link, grab it back from Zoom, pop it in your calendar, and add it to your calendar invitation to the other people who are going to be in the meeting. Next, screens. Again, so useful that I have done an entire 58 keys on just this app. Screens lets you remote control your Mac from anywhere. And I have used this so much. I mean, I have called up my office Mac from another continent and from downstairs in my living room. I've called it up uh, and emailed myself documents that are on it. Um, I've called it up to run applications. I'm not using it so much right now, though, October 2021, as I record this, because there are still some issues with screens and the beta version I'm on with macOS Monterey. By the time you see this, I'm sure that should be fixed. But actually, by the time you see this, I might even have got a new MacBook Pro, which means I will always have a Mac with me, so I won't need to remote dial in. I might actually retire screens at some point, but it's been a faithful companion for many, many years. Now, let's look at mostly at actual writing apps. So next, Drafts 5. While I write scripts in Final Draft and books in either Pages or Scrivener, depending, I write everything else in Drafts, and that is everything else on the iPhone, on the iPad, and on the Mac. Drafts on the iPhone has this thing where you, you just open it up and start writing. No need to create a new document, you just call it up and you're there. Open, think, start time. I, mean, I also find it just deeply pleasing to write in drafts on the iPhone. I find it great on the iPad, it's fine on the Mac. Who knows why we feel these things when we write in our tools. I may not stick with it because as I'm looking around, but I've been writing articles in drafts five for years now. Um, I also, I do articles in this, hang on, I do articles in this one too, Omni Outliner. Omni Outliner is brilliant, I mean just brilliant for helping you get ideas out of your head and then massaging them, organising them, expanding them. And yeah, you can use it to outline, you can use it to outline novels I suppose, but, and I have planned articles, but I plan events as well, and I plan large projects in Omni Outliner as well. Actually, if here's, just for example, here's the school visit I did the day after the iPad episode. Uh, I caught up on the iPhone to check directions for the for driving for maps. Same document available in Omni Outline on the iPhone, on the iPad and on the Mac too. And again actually there's at least at least one 58 keys all about on the outliner. Please see below. Now last of the actual writing apps, Apple Notes. This time please see the 58 keys three biscuit guide, a 45 minute deep dive into everything that is so useful 
about that app and again across all devices. Um, uh, I said earlier actually that I use Apple News a lot for research and for my reading. Well, yeah, but Reader 5 is my real news research tool. It's an RSS reader and almost every website worth its salt produces an RSS feed. When I open Reader, it pops off to every one of those sites. I read, checks out this feed. If there's anything new, it'll show me in Reader in a list. Um, as you go in, you get the list, you get a headline really, and a few words from the stand first, the opening power of the article. Tap on it and I maybe get a page of the article, and actually sometimes more. Sometimes I get all of the text right there, but always enough to see if I'm interested in reading more. And when I am, I can tap and be straight on that website within Reader. This means uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the kettle. I can just catch up on the latest news. Uh, or in fact, I'm reading, I think I'm reading about 300 or more websites a day, yet I am not fruitlessly going to any of them. I only go, I only read when there is something new. And then there's also this. Um, forget Reader for a second. Uh, instead of you or I searching Google for something, we can get Google to search for us all day, every day. And when it finds something, it can, you know, phone us or call us, it'll alert us. In fact, it's called an alert. It tells you through a Google alert that it's found something new. And Google alert can be emailed to you, but more usefully, it can be made into one of these RSS feeds. So now back to Reader. Alongside all of the news websites and headlines, Reader can include the results of a Google Alert RSS feed. And that means things like this. Not 100% certain I want to admit to you how interested I am in television, production, art, design, but I really am. And here's a new book all about it. Tell me that spaceship production design for Battlestar Galactica is not a niche topic, but I found it because of an alert. I, I didn't know about this book. There it was, waiting for me in Reader, specifically when I went in to take those screenshots to show you. Reader, I bought the book. Right, let me do terminology and pcalc. pcalc is a calculator. The iPhone comes with a calculator. Yeah, but it isn't pcalc. PCALC is practically a legend. It's, it's a famous app that's been around for decades and is on every possible Apple device you can think of, including the Apple Watch and yeah, even including Apple TV. It's just a really, really well-made, very good calculator. And it's particularly handy at conversions, which for some reason recently in the business, I've seen to be doing a lot, business and cooking. And nearly there, nearly done, terminology. This is a dictionary app for iPhone, and I've talked before about dictionary apps for iPhone. There are quite a few. I mean, there are plenty of them, and good and bad. And they tend to be all absorbing, because they're dictionaries, of course, they're absorbing. But I keep coming back to terminology because of this. Uh, let's just look up a word, and actually, it's offering me a word of the day. Let's tap on that. We could also actually have just selected and copied a word from something else, and then Tapping on search clipboard would send us off looking up that, but no, let's, yeah, why not? Let's just tap on its offered word of the day. There is a definition of it. Excellent. Across the top though, there's more. There are alternatives. Tap on Oxford, for instance, and terminology will throw the word over to the Oxford English Dictionary, or yeah, at least the bit of the OED that's available to read online for free. Multiple choices, multiple sources, different routes, different definitions, different articles and cases. Finding all of this through terminology it makes that app so handy. And now, you will never guess what's next on iPhone apps I am completely life support dependent upon. Yeah, no, trouble is, you, you're going to have to guess a little bit because I can't show you OmniFocus, my to-do app of choice. You see the app icon there, is, it's kind of a crosshatch thing and it is a bit temporary looking. It's temporary. I'm using a beta of the next version of OmniFocus and that's why I, I can't open it to show you what's in there. I can tell you that I 90% love the next version. There's a thing I dislike in it, a way of getting around your lists and projects and things that I just cannot get used to and I really dislike. And Basically, I'm talking to you with cross fingers that it changes before the end of the beta, but otherwise, 90% grief. Fantastic to-do app. 
yeah, OmniFocus, it's officially a to-do app, but you see, I see it as a can-do app. And at my kettle, I've recently read all the news. Well, now I can open OmniFocus and get it to show me, say, what phone calls I need to make. Yeah, actually, hang on, wait a second. Bring the phone back. There you go. It doesn't matter whether the phone call is uh, to do with today's writing client, whoever that is, tomorrow's editor, the Acme cartoon company, ordering flowers, returning if I'm whatever if I've put it into OmniFocus anywhere I can look now and just say list all the phone calls I'll go off and knock off a few of them phone calls emails messages actually let me bring them all back a second there you go I truly doubt that there is a day in which I don't use each of those I mean I mean I know you know a lot of them I hope you'll take a look actually at any of those you don't. Links for all of these things uh, are in the, uh, the description link area a bit below, including actually full links to all the 58 Keys episodes that are about particularly key ones. But for now, that's it, 58 Keys and my iPhone. Thank you very much for watching. Now, write more on any app you need, really. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon. I wonder what I've got on my second iPhone screen. <laughs>